Hi, uh, I'm Ian McDougall. I'm the director in charge of um, the project for the Geelong Library and Heritage Centre for the Arctex ARM architecture. We're going to show you why we're so proud of the project that um, we did for the city of Geelong. Our inspiration for the form comes from a number of streams. It comes from the, um, the tradition of the, the great reading rooms, the great libraries. Victorian State Library has got its great reading room with the big dome over the top, a sense of that space. There's a whole history of public buildings in Victoria which are from the 19th century, early 20th century, all identified by the, the dome as a civic marker. But um, on the other hand, it didn't want to look historicist. It wanted to look to the future and the council and the library, particularly the library, had a sense that it should speak to coming generations. One of the uh, big strategic objectives for the city was that um, the building actually be iconic, uh, to be a landmark building. And I think that you can say that they've achieved that quite successfully. And I love that they've done that by actually building something that's very modern and unique. It was quite ambitious in the role that a library would play in the city of Geelong. Um, I mean, most people say they want something that's, you know, within the community and um, and a kind of also a bit of a standout and a bit of a, an attractor. But the but the council, both in the in the brief and in their mood, was very much about the importance that the project could play in a kind of the city that's in a period of transition. The emphasis behind this project was to build something very special and very different for Geelong. Uh, so we had to make sure we had the right architect on board. We really wanted to showcase um, what can be done in Geelong and what can be achieved in terms of buildings. We were required to do three proposals. We did two schemes which were kind of conventional but not entirely conventional and then the dome scheme and unanimously the council just said, oh, are we allowed to have that one? Do you think we can actually do that one? The relationship between our user group, and in particular Paddy, the chief librarian, had a quite a strong vision about what the library should be. I mean, you can see the fruits of her vision in the way the library has come out. It's quite a different um, aspect to a community library. To be able to provide spaces and services and programs for a range of different uses and needs in the community, and this has been achieved with the outcome of the building. So as you enter, the ground floor is very deliberately designed as a gathering place, a meeting space. One of the difficulties with many contemporary libraries is when you come in you're just presented with stacks of books on shelves that sometimes are up over your head height or very claustrophobic feel. This gives you the open and yet it's still got the presence of the books. It's quite hard to get a balance between a space that's got some height and doesn't feel like an airport lounge. This is a bit of a steal from the um, 19th century um, libraries that have uh, the catwalk and um, mind you you can't have those anymore because of oh and issues but this is a, a version of that which gives you the sort of space, the presence of the books and the same intimacy that we wanted. On a sunny day when people are just sitting out here looking over the park to actually have that connection with the outside space, a sense of informal link between the library and the, and the park and the park then coming up into the library. Um, we did a lot of work to make sure that it wasn't too echoey. We've used a lot of soft finishes, um, so uh, the fantastic rug is made into a huge feature, so it's not just um, acoustic work, it's act and it's such a beautiful um, outcome that did an amazing job. The so use of um, the acoustic panel on the ceilings, um, which actually also does a huge um, role in, in reducing that reflectivity, um, and then also the acoustic panels, the drilled um, panels on the wall, the uh, plywood panels, they've also done an amazing job. Again, that car that we've worked with before, who specialise in this particular sort of finish, and they do a great job, it's a high quality finish, um, as well as quite utilitarian in the way that it works for acoustic point of view. And you can see the large padded columns that also help absorb a lot of the sound. But the quality of the light, I think the way the columns work, and also just the general flow of the way people move through the space, the quality of the sound, all make it into 
even though it's relatively big space, actually quite a welcoming and, and almost intimate space. Wow, if this is what it's like on the ground floor, I'm going to go up and explore the rest of the library. So there was a really deliberate um, design uh, focus to entice people to explore vertically. So the level one, one of our most successful spaces, is all for young people. So one half of it is for early years learning, uh, with collections and play space and programming space. Uh, for families, there's an outdoor courtyard there. And then the other half is for uh, young people, uh, teenagers, again with collections, spaces that they can get together and uh, you know work together, for example, on, on homework or explore a shared interest together. So then we get to level two, which is the inspiration space. And that's uh, where the adult nonfiction collection is housed and the arts and culture collection that I spoke about earlier. Um, and that's really available for more quiet reading enjoyment. And that's where you'll find those gorgeous ear chairs where you can sit and enjoy the view of the Heritage Park. A lot of our work, um, we use decorative finishes and we counterbalance the decorative finishes against the sort of more um, utilitarian finishes. Uh, and that's um, partly because we're actually interested in the extra layer of richness that you can get out of materiality. And, and libraries are the obvious place to have that because, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, the number of books on a shelf, they're different. In this case, the number of spaces you can have, it's like going into another little world. So in the toilets, the use of um, a highly decorative tile in the toilets just brings that sort of new lavishness. Um, I mean, it's not a particularly expensive way to go. Um, the tile suppliers have an amazing array of materials and the toilets are stunning, they are amazing. And then the adding of that quality with the lift is a bit like the toilets, a kind of another uh, embellishment, uh, another world um, inside that that um, captures that sort of difference across them. And then of course you've got the, the, the dramatic difference when you go into the Heritage Centre, which is the Red Room. Um, so that sort of identifies that as a separate entity. Um, so we talked before about the, um, the use of the Red and the sort of sense of it being like a club and being kind of a kind of um, like a special place because you can see with the material that's in here, it's quite, um, you know, folders with comb binders. It's pretty. Um, doesn't have a special quality to it and yet the actual material is really interesting. So the history of the region, people who are doing um, family history research, um, all of that sort of stuff, it's quite intriguing material they've got. Um, and um, so it needed to feel like a special place. Partitioning up the space using the joinery, but particularly the way the joinery is, um, the redness of it, the use of the sort of specially moulded sections, just lifted above it just being straight old, um, um, you know, library shelving and actually makes it feel like it's part of um, the, the decor rather than just something that's brought in. Public libraries are of course one of those spaces where the past and the present and the future can coexist beautifully and we've got a really successful outcome with the Heritage Centre. Gorgeous rich red colour with beautiful furnishings and a, a really very well designed purpose built repository for those valuable documents that contain Geelong's memory. And then right up the top we looked at a lot of different finishes including a return to the blue but one of the things up there is it's kind of up in the sky and it's that sort of sense of it warmth and sort of sunlight that we wanted to capture and maybe even a bit of the materiality of timber the design is made so that the, the um, conference rooms at the top can be used when the library's closed. So there is a sort of like, if there's an Level event up there, going down. if there's an event up there, you, you can come up and um, you know sort of get the sense of, oh, we're into this nighttime world. A brief was for a couple of meeting rooms up here, but the couple of meeting rooms, once you start to look at it, you're there. These could be amazing spaces. Our feeling was. 
It should capture that sense of we are in a, a big domed building. Um, it should feel um, like you're both inside but you can see out. The use of the tile, um, the hexagonal tile, reflects the use of the tile on the outside so you get the sense of that connection between the inside and the outside. But then the use of the sheen finish, the acoustic treatment because we wanted with the drilled um, panel to give us our acoustic effect and the matte finish gives a sort of, I guess it's like a hypercube, it's you know like a three-dimensional box but it isn't, it's flat. So you get that sort of interest in it and then the use of the lighting uh, captures a bit of that sort of same pattern and it gives it almost a, almost a sci-fi feel which in some areas we've, we've tried to tap into that sort of sense of a future, futuristic feel. In doing these tiles, um, working with that car, the, uh, we prototyped it, um, we, we, we designed it because we do all of our work in the computer so you design it in the computer and the vista and we do lots of shots of the colour. So once we'd established what we wanted, then we worked with prototyping and um, they actually made some prototyping tiles just to get the shape right and then they also made some prototyping tiles with the colour on and um, work through that process. I mean, it's always good to work with people who are prepared to do that. And then there's the dome itself. So we'd worked with the um, um, glass reinforced concrete subcontractor before, a Circo, and on the Melbourne Recital Hall. And they were fantastic. They were really uh, keen to be involved in the way that we actually resolved it and did early prototyping for us. So to, to work out how to actually do it, I mean, I think people and even ourselves um, believe that you make a sphere out of tiles and it's just all one tile, but it's not. There's 17 different tiles that allow you to make that, that um, shape. And so 17 different that are repeated. So that's quite a difficult mathematical and manufacturing problem. The areas right up the top are actually hung from a frame above. So there's some structural wonders that the engineers work through to, to make that work so that it actually hangs out like a cliff which was the idea. Apart from our resolution of the design of physical elements, the conceptualisation of the library is actually from them. And that's really the success of it, I think, because they had such a strong idea about what this library should be. Our membership has gone up significantly. The, the visitation rates have gone up significantly. So we're now at the end of 12 weeks of being open and we've already experienced 120,000 visitors. And that's actually three times uh, what we were um, experiencing in the old library. The, the public have absolutely loved the, the new library and heritage centre. I think the, the numbers that we've had through the doors in the first three months, you know, getting up towards 100,000 people, um, have certainly shown um, the response to the project. The reaction has been amazing. Like everybody from all walks of life just was knocked out by the possibility of what, what it would be. And right through the whole process, it's had that reaction, the sort of um, sense of it, sort of optimism and um, uniqueness um, that, um, as, as sort of landed in the in the city.